Welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We also are live on Music99 and GoJamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page at Television Jamaica or Instagram at Television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is on CSE chemistry and we are going to focus on the mole. I am Roger Dawkins. All right, so the mole. This is a topic that uh, students tend to find a little bit of challenge with sometimes because of the calculation um, based nature of it, right? Some students love it because they love the open numbers. Some students don't really like it, right? But persons tend to underestimate themselves and, and don't realize that this is a very simple, simple topic, right? And I'm going to help you through it. All right. So the mole, right? So the first thing we need to look at then is the mass of an atom, right? So we're going to define RAM, RMM, and RFM. The mass of an atom is extremely small, right? It's extremely small. And so we cannot use conventional uh, units of measurement to assign to atoms, all right? And so we use a unit of relative atomic mass. This is a system that compares any atom in the periodic table, whether it's calcium, whether it's phosphorus, whether it's potassium, right? It compares the atom of any element in the periodic table, it compares it to carbon-12. Now, the reason why we use carbon-12 is because of its relative abundance in the atmosphere. All right, so a carbon-12 atom is assigned a unit of 12. So it has a 12.00 atomic mass unit, which means mathematically one twelfth of that would be one AMU. All right, so every, the, the, the mass of every atom in the periodic table that is, def, that is derived by comparing it to carbon-12. All right. So relative atomic mass takes into account the relative abundance of each isotope of an element, right? So we know we have different uh, forms or different kinds of the same elements, right? So we know that you have carbon-12, you have carbon-14, right? You have protium, tritium, deuterium for hydrogen. These are different isotopes, right? And so we always take into consideration all the isotopes for the elements and add them together, all right? So when calculating the mass of the RMM or the RFM, right, we add all of the RAMs, all right? So for covalent compounds, remember, covalent compounds have covalent bonds. Covalent compounds have covalent bonds. That means there's no exchange of electrons, right? They are sharing their electrons. So for those compounds, they will be using the term RMM, relative molecular mass, because covalent compounds consist of molecules, right? For your ionic compounds, you will use RFM, or relative formula unit, because these are consisting of ionic, uh, comp ionic uh, compounds inside the structure, all right? So, we're going to start off our calculations now, so stay with me. So, to determine RMM, or RFM, all you need to do is add up every single RAM in the compound. That's all you're doing, right? So if you find the, the RMM of glucose, you're gonna add how much carbon is in it, how much hydrogen is in it, and how much oxygen is in it, all right? And since RMM and RFM are comparative values, because remember, we are comparing it to carbon-12. So because it's a comparative value, they don't have any unit. All right, so let's begin our calculation here. So this says to calculate the relative molecular mass of nitrogen, all right? So the relative atomic mass of nitrogen is 14, all right? So the RAM of nitrogen is 14. However, as you should know by now, nitrogen is a diatomic compound or diatomic molecule, right? It does not exist as N, always exists as N2. Same thing for hydrogen, same thing for our halogens like chlorine and fluorine and bromine, all right? So because, so look now, look at the screen. So 14 is the RAM of nitrogen. But because there's two of it, we're going to multiply that 14 by 2. 
and that's how we end up with 28. All right, so again, up here, the REM is 14. So we have it down here. But because it's N2, we have to multiply this 14 by two. And so now, our RMM for nitrogen is 28. Let's look at that bigger compound, glucose. All right, so here the question already give you the REM for carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So again, all you're going to do, add up every single element in glucose. So here we go. So carbon is 12. So we have 12 here, all right? But how much carbon is in glucose? See it here? Six. So 12 times six. So move on now to hydrogen, which is what? One. But how much hydrogen is there? 12. So it's 12 times one. Then move on to the oxygen, right? And how much oxygen has? 16. But how much is there? Six. So 16 times six. And you're going to get 72, 12, 96, equal 180. And so that's how you calculate your RMM, all right? So same thing for RFM. All they're going to do, once you know the molecular formula, add every single atom that's in it together, all right? All right, so the mole now, this represents a fixed number that's used to measure extremely minute or small particles, right? The value of a mole is extremely large. If I went to the store and I said I want a dozen eggs, you know, they're going to give me 12 eggs, right? If I said I want a gross of eggs, I'm going to get 144 eggs. A lot of eggs that, but maybe I bake every week, right? Or every day, rather. But if I ask for one mole of eggs, look how much zero is right here. This is more zeros and money in the world put together, right? 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That's the amount of eggs I would purchase if I asked for one mole. So as you can see, this value here is very large. So we normally save it for atom because atoms are so small that even this amount of atoms, we can't even see it, right? So we use this value for our atoms. And this number, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23, is known as Avogadro's constant. All right, him rule at R a while ago, Avogadro's constant. All right, so we know that a constant is a number that doesn't change, right? In our formula, it will not change. And this number is very important, all right? All right, so the mass of one mole of a substance is known as its molar mass, right? And the unit is grams per mole. So all you're going to do is that once you find the RAM, the RFM, or the RMM, all you're going to do is express that in grams per mole, right? Because what you're basically saying is that when you say grams per mole, you're saying this amount of substance contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms, molecules, or formula units, all right? So now, here's the important part now. So we can use molar mass to calculate the mass of an element. We can also use it to tell us the number of moles of an element or compound. And here's our first formula for the day. Number of moles is equal to mass, over molar mass. So the first formula for the day, number of moles equal mass divided by molar mass. So let's, let's look at that question real quick now. So what is the number of moles in 10 grams of calcium carbonate? All right, let's go to the board for this one. All right, so it says what is the mass, what is the number of moles in 10 grams of calcium carbonate? All right, so we know the mass is 10 grams. All right, and the compound is calcium carbonate, which will be CaCO3, right? So to find the molar mass of that, we're gonna add every single element in it, just like we did before, all right? The question gave us the REM. So for calcium, it's 40, and there's only one of it, right? And carbon, there's only one of it, right? Plus oxygen, which is what, 16, but how much oxygen do we have? We have three oxygen here. Remember, the number that comes after tells you how much of that atom is there. So 16 times three, right? So that is what we're gonna get. And so our value should add up to 100 grams per mole, all right? So once you have mass, so we have mass here, we have molar mass here, so now we can apply our formula of number of moles equal mass 
over molar mass, which is 10 over 100, which would give us 0 0.1 mole. All right? And for the unit, we don't normally write the E, so you'd have 0 0.1 mole. All right? All right, so now let's look at the next question. It says to calculate the mass of 0.2 mole of sulfuric acid. All right, calculate the mass of 0.2 mole of sulfuric acid. So this time, right, so this time they have given us the number of moles and we can work out the molar mass. So what we need now is the mass. So let's look at our formula here. Let me rub this out. Right, so look here, simple. This is our traditional formula. But now, instead of asking for number of moles, it's asking for mass. So this will now be the subject of our formula. So how do we get mass to be on one side? Look, we have number of moles on one side. So how do we get mass to have itself on one side? We will take the molar mass and carry it to this side. Now remember, in mathematics, once you go from one, once you go across the equal sign, what it's doing is changing. So on this side, molar mass is dividing. So once you go across the equal sign, it must be multiplying. So now the new formula will be mass equal number of moles multiplied by molar mass. So all I have done is rearrange this first formula, all right? So now, once we do this, we can then find our answer. Because we can say 0 0.2, according to the question, right, times the molar mass, which is whatever we work out. All right? So if we look at the slide now, we can see the full equation. All right? So all I did again, I rearranged the formula from number of moles equal mass over molar mass, and I, convert, and I rearranged it to say mass now is equal to number of moles times molar mass. And here the molar mass is worked out to be 98 because it's H2SO4, so there's two, so it's two times one. S is one, so it's 32. And oxygen is 16, but there's four of it in the formula. All right, and so the mass that we get will be 19.6 grams. All right? All right, we're gonna step it up a little bit now. So the number of particles in one mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23, always. If you have one mole of calcium, it have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. If you have one mole of glucose, it have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. If you have one mole of calcium chloride, it have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 formula units. That number is constant, all right? So using this fact now, we can calculate the amount of particles in any given number of moles, all right? Now we need to remember that the type of particles depends on the bonding in the substance, all right? So the substance is an element. So if we're just thinking about calcium, if we're just thinking about sodium, right? The particles are atoms, all right? If we're thinking about substances that only have covalent bonding, so our sugars, right? the gases in the air that only have covalent bonding, then those consist of molecules, all right? And we know that molecules themselves are made up of atoms. And if the compound or the substance is an ionic compound, right, then we know that the particles in it are formula units, all right? So here is the second formula for the day. Number of particles equal number of moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So basically, to find the number of particles, we will multiply the number of moles by Avogadro's constant. And here's a, a, a question I did already for you, right? So it says to calculate the number of atoms in 0.5 mole of copper. So here's our formula. Number of particles equal number of moles times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. The number of particles equals to 0 0.5, which is the mole right here, times Avogadro's constant is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, all right? And so our answer is 3.0 times 10 to the 23 atoms, right? Copper atoms. So all you do, plug in your values into your formula, all right? So just to bring your attention, right? 
So one mole of water has two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen. Let's look carefully at the, 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 the formula for our water. It's H2O. So when you have one mole of water, right, in the H2O, we are seeing two hydrogen. So it have two moles of hydrogen. And for oxygen, there's only one of it. So it only have one mole of oxygen atom. Same thing for the potassium carbonate, right? It's a K2. That means there's two moles of potassium ion. And the CO3, there's only one of it. So there's only one mole of carbonate ion, right? This is something we need to pay attention to because it can become very important later. All right, so here we go again. It says calculate the number of molecules in 1.8 grams of water. All right, it wants the number of molecules, which, which we know the molecules are particles. All right, so how are we going to do this? The only formula that we know of that consists of particles is, that's right, the second one that we just learned a while ago. All right, that's the only formula we have that contains particles. So number of molecules, because molecules will be the particles, right? Is equal to number of moles times the 6.02 times 10 to the 23. All right, that's the formula we're going to use. But what is the problem? The problem is we do not have number of moles. We don't have that, right? So we need to get this. How can we get it? By using the first formula. Remember, the first formula is number of moles equals to mass over molar mass, right? And the question did give us the mass, which is 1.8 gram. So all we're going to do then, we have mass from the question, and we can calculate molar mass. And by doing so, we can get the number of moles. All right? So here it is. So you find the number of moles by dividing the mass by the molar mass. All right? And you get 0 0.1 mole. And then once you get the number of moles, it'll simply plug it in back into your first formula. All right? So remember, the first thing you must do for your questions, write the formula that you will need to answer the question. Write that formula down. Then you look and see if you have every component of the formula to finish your question. If you don't, then you go to a next formula that will give you the piece that you need. All right? So we're going to move now to molar volume. All right. So now Avogadro's law states that the equal volumes of all gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure contain the same number of molecules. And this is known as the molar volume. All right. Now molar volume is affected by temperature as well as pressure. Right? We know for gases, if we increase the temperature, we're going to increase the volume because the gases are going to want to spread out more. They're going to move more energetically. Right? And we know that if we apply a pressure to gases, the volume will decrease because you're squeezing the gas particles together. And as a result, you're going to condense the volume. All right? So the two conditions we use are STP, or standard temperature and pressure, and RTP, which is room temperature and pressure. All right? So for standard pressure, the molar volume is 22.4 dm cubes on the right side of the screen, right? 22.4 dm cube or 22,400 cm cube. And for RTP, the molar volume would be 24 dm cube or 24,000 cm cube, right? We need to remember that 1 dm cube equals 1,000 cm cube. So that is why the units look like that, all right? So our third formula for the day, volume occupied is equal to the number of moles times the volume at either STP or RTP. It depends on what the question gives you. All right, so here we go. Number five, it says calculate the volume occupied by 0.25 mole of nitrogen gas at STP. So say the formula here, volume occupied equal number of moles times the volume at STP or RTP. So the number of moles here is 0.25 and the volume at STP will be 
22.4, right? Because that's what we have from the first slide. So all I want to say is 0 0.25 times 22.4, I end up with 5.6 dm cube. All right? So all you're doing for this question, you're just plugging in the formula with the values, all right? So remember, first thing is first. Once you get the question, put the formula that will give you what you want, all right? All right, so let's look at the next one now. It says, calculate the volume occupied by 4.5 times 10 to the 22 molecules of hydrogen chloride gas at RTP. So remember, the first thing we do is we we'll write the formula that we want to give the answer. So we, what it says, calculate the volume occupied. That is what we want, all right? So we want volume occupied so volume occupied is equal to the number of moles times the volume at I want you to question and tell us RTP so volume at RTP all right so this is what the question wants now, by looking at this, I am seeing the number of particles. So I don't see the number of moles. So this is not in it, right? I already have this. I know that this is, this is going to be 24.0 dm cube. I know that already, but I don't have this. So how do I do that? All I want, so what, what formula do I know? That I have the number of moles plus the number of particles. That's right, the second one, right? We're going to say number of particles equal number of moles times the 6.02 times 10 to the 23. All right. So now from the question, the question gave us this because it's 4.5 it's times 10 to the 22. The question gave us that, right? And we already get this. So we can calculate the number of moles from that question. All we need to do is move this to this side. All right? So we will end up with number of moles equal the 4.5 times 10 to the 22 over 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And once we get that, we will get the number of moles. All right, and so first you get the number of moles, which is 0 0.075, and then you plug it into your first formula. All right, so we're going to stop here for now, and we'll continue after the break, right? So if you have any questions on what we have done so far, you can send them in on our various platforms, and I will see if I can answer in the final segment. When we come back, we answer your questions and wrap up. Stay with us. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. For COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with the cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness.
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Welcome back to School is Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE subjects. Today we have been discussing CSEC chemistry, the mole. All right, so we left off at our question at molar volume, right? So again, the first thing I can't stress this enough, the first thing you need to do, write the equation that answers your question. Once you get that, everything else will fall into place. All right, so just to reiterate, um, based on the slide, right? So volume occupied is equal to number of moles times volume at RTP. That will give us the volume occupied. But because we don't have the number of moles, we have to think about the next formula that has all the components that we want. So number of moles, right, can equal to number of particles times or uh, divided by Avogadro's constant. So once you do that, you get 0.075 mole, right? So once you get this 0.075 mole, all you do now is plug that back into your first formula, right? So now the number of moles is 0.075 and volume at RTP, as we should know, is 24.0 dm cube all right so now we're going to move on to mass concentration and molar concentration all right so when we say mass concentration this is the mass of solute dissolved in one dm cube of solution all right so if you have a fixed mass and you dissolve it in one dm cube that is the mass concentration so if I take 60 grams of glucose and dissolve it in one dm cube or a thousand cm cube of water, what I will have is 60 grams per dm cube of glucose solution. It's as simple as that, right? Same thing for the molar concentration. The number of moles that's dissolved in one dm cube or a thousand cm cube, and the unit for that is moles per dm cube because again, it's amount of moles dissolved in one dm cube. All right. So here are formulas four and five. Uh, should be the final two formulas for the day. Um, so number of moles is equal to volume times the molar concentration, right? And formula five says mass is equal to volume times mass concentration, all right? So look at these. So the number of moles, volume times molar concentration, and for mass is volume times mass concentration all right so let's look at that question now it says to calculate the molar concentration of a solution of NaOH which is sodium hydroxide which contains six grams of sodium hydroxide dissolved in distilled water to make 200 cm cube of solution all right so that is our question so for that now, we're going to go back. So the question is asking for what? It's asking for molar concentration. So we're going to use our formula four. Remember, look for the formula that gives you what you want. So we're going to use formula four, which is number of moles equals to volume times molar concentration. So I'm going to put it up on the slide. So remember, so the, the, the first pink line, right? The first pink line of the next slide is saying that volume times molar concentration 
And all we're going to do is rearrange the formula to make molar concentration the subject, right? We're going to make molar concentration the subject because that is what the question is asking for. See it here? Calculate the molar concentration. All right. But when we rearrange the formula, we realize, based on the question, we don't have number of moles. We have volume, which is 200, but we don't have the number of moles. So what formula do we know that have number of moles and have what else? Hmm. Oh, see there's six gram. So what formula do we know that have moles that have mass? The first one, right? Number of moles equal mass over molar mass. So all you would need to do now is calculate the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, right? Let me do it on the board because sometimes when it's person on the slide, they feel a bit confused because it looks a little bit crowded, all right? But it's nothing hard, nothing difficult. So let's go again. So the question is asking to calculate the molar concentration. That's what we want, molar concentration. So remember, focus on what the question wants. Molar concentration. That's the key. That's the creme de la creme. All right? So we know that the first, the first formula for number four is the only one that have that. Number of moles equals to volume times molar concentration. All right? I'm going to shorten it to, to count. So we need to make this the subject of our equation. So all we need to do, move this volume over to this side. All right? So molar concentration is going to be equal to the number of moles divided by volume. Now the question did give us volume, which is 200 cm cube, but it did not give us the number of moles. All we got instead was the mass, all right? And the mass was 6 grams. So again, what formula can I use to find the number of moles that have mass in it? The first one, right? Number of moles equals to mass over molar mass. Right? So all I'm going to do now is say 6 divided by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide, which is going to be 23 plus 1 plus 16. Right? And that's going to give us 0. So overall, we're going to get 0.15 mole. So once you get the number of moles now, see there? We get the number of moles. So all we can do now, we can plug it back into the first formula to get the molar concentration. So we'll plug it back in here. So, so all we're going to say now is the 0 0.15 divided by the volume. Alright? So woo, let me clear the board a little bit. Alright. So now that we have number of moles, right, and we have volume, we're going to say 0 0.15 divided by 200. But well, look here now, look here, this is, the part, this is the part where some persons mess up. The volume given to us in the question is 200 cm cube. But the unit for molar concentration, right, is moles per dm cube. Look at this. This volume is in cm cube. This volume is in dm cube. You cannot use two different values in the same formula. We have to convert one to the other. All right? And so we're going to convert this 200 cm cube to dm cube. All right? So when we convert it, Right, we should know mass minus so by a thousand, so ten hundred thousand. So we're gonna end up with 0 0.2 dm cube. All right, so this is the volume we should be working with. All right, remember the question gave us 200 cm cube, but the unit is moles per dm cube. So we have to convert the cm cube to dm cube before we can use it. All right, so all I've done here is convert the 200 to 0.2 dm cube. So now, our formula will be 0 
divided by 0 0.2. All right, so let me clear this off. So once you have that, then your final answer will be 0 0.75 moles per dm cube. And that is your molar concentration, right? So I know that today we're not doing a past paper, but because we're doing so much calculations in this, right? Then we know that it's gonna be fine. All right, but I can touch on one past paper before we close off. All right, so it says to here, calculate the minimum mass of zinc required to completely react with 100 cm cube of 0.2 moles per dm cube. All right, so remember, breathe. When you see a, a CXC question, you breathe. Then you look at what you want. It says calculate the minimum mass. Stop. The question wants what? Mass. All right, remember, Always look for what the question wants and write the formula for that first so you don't get confused later. So the question says calculate the minimum mass. The only formula that we know with mass is when we rearrange the first one. So number of moles, right? It's going to multiply by the molar mass, right? So all we have done here is rearrange the first formula. Let me clear this up. All right, but here the question did not give us the number of moles. So this is something that we need. We need that, all right? So how can we get the number of moles? What else did the question give us? It gave us volume and it gave us molar concentration, right? Which means we can use the fourth formula, which is number of moles is equal to volume times molar concentration all right and the volume given is 100 cm cube which we must convert remember that cannot use cm cube and dm cube what two of them have to be dm cube or two of them be cm cube so we're going to have 0 0.1 because we convert to dm cube times the molar concentration which is 0 0.2 all right all right now I'm gonna stop it here, right? Because I've already done most of it for you. So once you find the number of moles here, all you're going to do now is plug it into the first formula and multiply it by the molar mass and you will get your answer, all right? So that's all for today for CC Chemistry, the mole. We hope you grasp some of the concepts we discussed. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN today at 4 p.m. and in the school's not out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m right here on TVJ. It will also be on video on demand on One Spot Media. Until next time, I'm Roger Dawkins. Communication Studies is next. Please stay with us. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring.